we're going to break down Legend Board by Tracy Dion so that you're ready to read Bloodmark Book 2 in this incredible series. If you want to get straight into the summary to get everything that you need to know for the reread, please jump to this timestamp. But before we get there, a warning. This book, although it's clearly fantasy, it touches on really very hard and deep topics that I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to convey properly in the summary. So I apologize in advance. Legendborn is separated in four parts and a prologue. The prologue will start with Argel Bree and her father in this hospital room and they will get to know that her mom has just passed away due to a car accident. In that moment Bree starts to feel in the air something that might seem as magic but she obviously just lets this go and this will be a tipping point for Bree who from that moment onwards will have two different Bree's within her. She will have Brie and then she will also have what she called after Brie and we will start with Brie and her best friend Alice going into this school and then going into a party. We will get to see a little bit more of their friends. One of them is going to be Caroline and her boyfriend Evan and Brie will see how there's this monsters that are looming, feeding from people and there are two main characters here that are kind of like fighting them. Selwyn Kane who she sees defeating one of these monsters and the other one is this girl called Victoria. After this battle Thor and Cell agrees that they need to make people forget what they've seen and Cell does a little bit of magic and makes everyone forget what they've seen. We move to the next day when obviously this party came into knowledge of the Dean of this school. They get a warning and breathe. Because of her bad behavior she will get a mentor. And something weird starts to happen because Bree starts to remember the fight and the monster that happened the night before. We don't know it at this moment but later on we will get to see how Bree is able to to fight Mesmer through pain. She also unlocks a memory from the moment in which her mom died and it seems that everything was not as it seemed and that there was some person also making them forget and changing their reality and that's the moment where she will start thinking that her mom's death was not natural but it was caused by this magic that she does not really know a lot about. We move forward and soon after Brie will meet Nick. He is not just a good guy that she was expecting and you know from moment zero they they seem to have this incredible connection that they don't really know how to explain. And in one of those conversations, Brie will see this magic again, these colors, and she, thinking that it might be related to the death of her mom, will run straight forward with the surprise that this is a monster, kind of like a hellhound. And we will discover how Nick is in reality the one killing it. So Brie will start to understand that Nick is also within this group of magic, and this scene will kind of end with Brie being really injured. A little bit after, Brie will wake up in this old tower kind of place close to the school that it's run by this cool guy called William. It seems that William has cured her because she had a lot of injuries and it's in that moment where Brie starts to ask Nick about the legend born. This concept she learned the night before from Cell and Thor and she is starting just to say random names in order to extract information from Nick. At this moment we'll have this clarification that there's this order called the legend born. They're fighting evil and they try to keep monsters or Shadowborn away from the regular people also called Windsborn. It seems that there are different gates opening throughout the world and these gates are being used by these monsters to go and kill people. These creatures feed from humans, from their emotions and this is what Brie saw the night before. She will also understand that in this order there are people with different roles. We will have the Legendborns and she will also learn about the Merlins and about the pages. These pages are the ones helping the legend bond, the ones that are not really magical but that serve to these people. Meanwhile Merlins are these kind of mages. Because she feels that she can trust Nick, she shares with him that she saw these monsters feed on humans the night before and that she can resist Cell's mesmer. But she will need to prove it because soon after Cell comes into place and he will mesmer again Bree. Fast forward to the next day, she wakes up in her bed. Alice is starting to be really mad at Brie because she is doing a lot of bad behavior, getting drunk, disappearing. But Brie will remain being very secretive and she won't tell anything to Alice as of now. She will actually just tell her by the end of the book. She, however, won't let things calm because she is starting to remember again and remembers the place. So she gets there and in that place, there's this 
very cool girl called Sara. It seems that she asked Brie what she's doing there. She says that she is a page and when Sara asks who is a sponsor you, she says it's Blink. Brie will learn that there are different trials that are about to start which can make regular people or one sports enroll in this order. And so she will beg Nick to help her and to sponsor her. And she will share that her mom was killed in a car accident and that she saw a Merlin mesmering her. It really resonates with Nick. We don't know why at this moment, but later on we will learn that his mom was also mesmered and taken away from him. He will be, okay, let's do it. Let's get you enrolled. Let's see how that goes. And let's try to find answers together to what happened to your mom. And that's the end of part one and we start part two discord with the knowledge that there are some trials but in order for that to happen they need to pass this oath that is casted by cell this oath links each of the pages to their sponsor but also grants them this site Nick will help Brie avoid this oath through pain again, but Cell will really have trust issues with Brie because he can feel that the oath has no taken. However, this night also ends up in battle because a terrible shadowborn creature comes in, and as a result of that, a lot of different people get injured. Fast forward to the next section then, William is going to take the place of explaining Brie a little bit more about this order. It seemed that this order is the result of what remains of the round table of the Earth mythology in that Nick is no other but the scion, the heir of the Arthur line. It seems that back then in the last war when Arthur fell, Merlin, this great mage, cast this spell that linked Arthur and all of his 13 knights to their bloodlines, ensuring that their spirit can remain alive throughout the ages and that they can be awakened. And in this moment we will learn two main things. The first one is that these different lines of heirs have been really been looked upon. is spirits can possess the body of the person and they can manifest. We've already seen the awakening happen to these different lines of knights, these different legendborns. This, however, has a terrible price, which is called the abatement. The life of this heir will be turned short. And the second thing is that there's this event called the Kamlan, which is this war that it's approaching. And this is the event that it's awakening the different science, the different heirs. And it seems that this war is coming because the shadow bones, these demons, are starting to work in line with the descendants of the line of Morgan, which are Merlins that splinter off the line official of Merlin and that they started to become an enemy. Lots of information then. And when Brie comes back to them with Alice, she starts crying. We will see for the first time that Brie has this mage flame. So we move forward to the next day when we see how Alice, being really concerned, has called her dad and her dad has ensure that Brie has a therapist called Patricia. She agrees to talk with Patricia because she seems was friends with her mom and she really wants information about her mom. And when they are together, the first thing that Patricia says to her is that if she is a wild crafter, same as her mom. Brie is like a wild what? And then we will start this relationship where Patricia will have really a dilemma of sharing with Brie this different magic called root or not because this magic seems to be really different between the different families and she finds it really weird that her mom did not share any with Brie. In this section also we will start to see how Brie and Nick starts to be more than just friends, they start to kiss and you know there's this part between them but at the same time, the relationship with Cell will go worse and worse and worse. Some days pass and we gather again in this lodge when Davis, Nick's dad, will start to share that these trials will start to happen and now because more and more of the science has started to be awakened and that the different legend ones really need their squire. And starting that night, creating different groups of pages and ensuring that they can take a mannequin to safety. Of course, Brie passes this, but we will get to see again how a terrible creature comes and attacks Nick. Nick will recover and some days will pass and those days will be filled with conversations between Patricia and Brie. It seems that Patricia will finally agree to tell everything that she knows to Brie. They will sit together in the cemetery with different flowers and she will explain to Brie that there's another type of magic called root. Root can be also treated differently but the main difference between the type of magic that the legendborn have is that root is borrowed from the ancestors. There's always this, I want to offer something and then the ancestor need to grant you that power. It's not something that you take 
forever. Therefore, she offers different plants, different beverages, and she tells me to get prepared because she will share her powers with her, giving us start to part three, root. And what we will see in this part is such a trip, quite literally. It seems that Patricia has the power of going back to the memories of her ancestors and she's able to bring we with her. They will go to three different memories. Only the first one will be managed by Patricia. In Patricia's lines, the different black women were able to have powers, first of healing, but one of these ancestors will see Brie and will take her in another trip where she will get to see how demons have golden eyes moment in which Brie will start to think that Cell is a demon. And also another moment, this time Patricia's sister, where we will see how a mage opened in that school, in that university, a gate. And that gate and the demons that emerge from that section is what killed Patricia's sister. There's going to be a lot for Brie who will clearly not trust the magic that it's done through the legend ones, but she will continue in this path because she wants to know the truth. And therefore the second trial will start. And this trial, it's mainly based on them finding different objects and avoiding them being killed or injured. The pages will be accompanied by different legend one creatures, but Cell will be the one accompanying her because he wants to have a closer look into what is she doing. It turns out that everything is kind of like a trap that Cell creates in order for Brie to display her demon nature. It's in this moment what she will call him a demon. Things will get really out of hand as they are attacked by some demon foxes that can consume the ether, the magic from self. And in that moment it's when Brie will display again these flames killing these monsters. The two of them will be found afterwards. It seems that the trial was kind of like called off because Thor, who is the third line of Arthur, was awakened. The days keep passing but the relationship between Cell and Brie will not be the same. A little bit more of trust will happen. We will see though more about the root magic as Patricia has different sessions with Brie. In one of those sessions Patricia will bring another student called Maria. Maria is also a root crafter and she is a medium. But when she tries to contact Brie's ancestor it seems that the line is broken. A moment in which we discover that none of the women of this line knew their grandmother. Really saddened about this realization and just runs off. She will try to just focus and move forward for what she knows with the legend boards is starting to train for the third trial which is going to be a fight. Different people will try to help Brie here but Cell will eventually help her closing the bonds between the two. And it's because of their bond being a closer that Brie will share with Cell everything that has happened with her mom and why is she here. And she will tell him that she has seen how a long time ago there was this gate that was opened within the university by a mage. Cell, really intrigued by this revelation, will take Brie to Nix's house while well, he is not there because they want to get into the records that Davis, Nix's dad in one of the regions had made maybe from that event. And when they get there, they will discover two very shocking things. The first one is that in fact there was this gate opened and that gate was opened by Cell's mom. At that moment the king's a mage. It seems that because her mom was really powerful she was called by her demon blood and that that is what drove her. From that moment her mom was locked apart and only she had kind of like a relapse in order to breed Cell. And after that she also was taken away Way, which will really shock Cell as he thought that his mom was dead. The second thing that they found out is that there were different people that saw how these monsters come from that gate and one of those was Bree's mom. It seems that a Merlin mesmered everyone but as Bree's mom was also able to resist the mesmer she realized that she was going to be followed and tested by the order through all of her life. Reason why she kept really a low profile and why she never wanted Bree to go into this university and she never shared anything about her powers with Bree. This is also the moment when we discover that the last entry of her file is when she dies and that her death was in reality a car accident, no magic related. There was a Merlin in those last moments because that one wanted to check that Faye 
was dead and that nothing was shared to the family in those last moments. And this will really shut up Brie and from this moment she won't really want to know anything else about the order, giving space to the fourth part which is called Splinter. And this part begins with Brie's dad coming into this university and going to talk with her because he knows that Patricia is not working with her anymore and he shares with her this jewelry box that was from her mom. And when she is alone and opens that, it seems that within that box there's this charm bracelet. When she touches it, it seems that a rage of mage flame comes into place and that a memory is unlocked. And in this memory, what we will see is a small Brie and also Faye talking. It seems that Faye, Brie's mom, got this memory explaining her everything that has happened and how they, their line, are not usual root crafters, but that they also had this weird thing, this blood magic that they don't know about. She shares that sadly if she is watching it is, it's because she now has the magic and the only thing that she knows is that the magic that they have, and that's not only root, can pass through the different generations just once at a time and that the only way in which a daughter can have that magic is because the mom has already passed away. This will really sadden Brie but her mom will tell her that she knows of her pain and really try to encourage her to move forward her own death. This will wake up this feeling in Brie who will now go talk with Patricia and Maria and will tell them everything that she knows, everything about the memory and Maria will try again to contact Brie's ancestors and this time is really a tipping point because it's the moment in which Brie will allow herself to deconstruct, to get away from after Brie, Maria will be able to connect with her ancestors, discovering now that Brie is in reality also a medium and that her grandmother will remain in her until she finds a way of calling another ancestor able to answer why they have these Power. So summarizing, Brie is able to call this mage flame because she has this blood magic that no one really knows why. But she is also a medium because she has root magic. So those are the two different magics that live within Brie. Brie that now understands a lot more about her heritage and about her mom will want to make peace with Nick and she will agree to go to this gala when the different legendborn are and when she appears it seems that it's the moment when the different legendborn called upon their squires and Nick will call upon Brie and she will accept. She will wake up soon after because it seems that Davis mage Isaac just did a weird thing to her and it's in this moment where Davos will share with her that he is the one that has been opening the different gates and that he wants to bring Kamlan back, he wants to create this war, he's fabricating it because he really wants his son Nick to be called upon Arthur and to have all that power. This is a risk though. If Arthur is killed when he is possessing one of the different S, the spell will die. Nothing will pass through the different generations. It seems that Kudal Davis has Alice and he is kind of blackmailing her to just go away, say no to everything, like leave everyone in peace because he is sexist and racist and he is the worst. We will agree because his mage is making Alice forget memories. And when the both of them get to the dorm, it seems that Brie, that it's now possessed by her grandmother and she is co-living within her, she will call upon another ancestor and she will be able to heal Alice. And this is the moment where she will share everything that she knows with her. And so we and will now see this next scene where all of the different legend boys are together and they realize that Nick is missing. Therefore, Brie starts to share everything that she knows about Davis and how he's fabricating this war. And they get into this conclusion that Excalibur it's in reality in this school and that the demons might go there. They go separate ways trying to find Nick and his dad before Arthur is called and she gets paired up with Evan. But soon after we will discover that he is in reality a demon impersonating and that he works for the line of Morgaine. So it's not just that different demons are a threat but that Morgaine is coming again. This demon will start killing different people and when they get into this 
this place where Excalibur is, he will threaten Nick that he will kill Bree unless he calls upon Arthur and takes Excalibur. And so he does so and he awakens. The thing is that when he is about to take Excalibur, he cannot take it. And it's in that moment when Bree's grandmother has already connected with the ancestor Vera and makes her go to the past, to the answers of why she has this type of magic. It seems a long time ago Vera, an ancestor of Bree, was a slave from the Davis plantation. It seems that they were not able to have children and that the lady of the house had an affair with the line of Lancelot. Meanwhile, the master of this house raped the ancestor of Bree, therefore siring in her the descendant of Arthur. When the ancestor of Davis saw he was in his mind to kill her, therefore starting this really dangerous moment when Vera will do whatever it takes to remain alive and save her child. While doing so, she will call upon a blood oath. But the price to pay is that this power can only be in one daughter at a time. This is also the moment when we realize that Bree is in reality the heir, the scion of Arthur, and Arthur awakens and takes Bree, who takes then Excalibur, kills all of the demons there, and before going dormant again, he makes sure that all of the different people swear to him, her. It seems then that Nick was not Arthur, but in reality, Lancelot. That's why they had this incredible trust relationship. A little bit after, we will wake up with Davis on the flea with Nick and how now they need to figure out what is happening, how to settle everything, how Kamlan will emerge and also finding Cell's mom, because it seems that was his mom, that one that mesmer Bree and that knew that she will be able to recover because she was also friends with her mom. So chun chun chun! And that's how we end Legendborn. I hope this was clear. I know it, it is a lot. So let me know down below if you find this useful or if there's anything I'm missing. And also, how excited are you for Bloodmark?